So it's been a while since I last uploaded a video to this channel when I built the card rack for my girlfriend. Um, I've been busy with a lot of stuff, but in the meantime, I've uh, I've had a little bit of time to think about building a CNC router. And to tell you the truth, myself and my friend Savas, who some of you may be following as well, um, have been thinking about making a CNC router for several years, um, starting from a point when I knew nothing really about how to build things properly. Um, and uh, since then I've worked in electronics companies, learnt about computer programming more uh, and got a 3D printer and a laser cutter. And you might say, why do I need another CNC machine at this point? Uh, but a CNC router can do stuff that neither a, a 3D printer or a laser cutter can. Um, but also recently Savas got uh, an Inventables CNC router that he's had a few issues with and, and I've just been wondering, can I actually learn about those, uh, can I learn from his problems um, and maybe improve on the uh, on the Inventables design uh, by coming up with my own. So I've, um, from my experience with uh, RepRap and my experience uh, converting my laser cutter to run on, on RepRap Electronics which enabled it to accept G-Code, um, I'm certain at least uh, about the control electronics that I'm going to use for my CNC router. Um, I also have uh, some NEMA 23 motors from ages ago, from from the first and second attempts that uh, myself and Savas made together to build a CNC machine that didn't quite work out. So at least that's out of the way. I've got probably, to be honest, a couple of hundred pounds worth of stepper motors that I haven't been using. Um, my control boards um, is going to be ramps um, with a Torino Power Arduino underneath it. Uh, Torino Power can accept 35 volts um, input as standard, which is obviously very useful for CNC machines, uh, especially for my laser cutter, which could only run, uh, like there's the power supply within the laser cutter, could only supply. 24 volts, it would have been very complicated to use anything other than Torino power. It is a bit more expensive than standard Arduino, but it's very, very much worth it. Um, and also, I'm going to be buying these uh, stepper drivers that I never used before uh, that, to plug into the ramps, which are called DRV8825. Um, apparently, these can just provide a bit of extra current, and these are recommended for. NIMA 23 motors. Um, the RepRap, I believe, is running on only NIMA 17 size. I mean, of course, the rating, the the number, either 17, 23, in the in the motor code name doesn't necessarily tell you that it takes more current. But as a larger motor, NIMA 23s usually do. Um, I've been thinking for quite a while, as I said, about CNC routers. Um, I've tried to come up with some of my own mechanical solutions, especially for the slides. Um, I'm just going to go through a few of those now and then, then show you what I've, I'm probably going to make a decision on as, as what seems to be the lower cost and, and most accurate mechanical solution for, for a slide. This is a long, this is a very, very old um, attempt that I had at actually 3D printing um, a linear slide. Um, my idea with this was, uh, well obviously I just got my rep wrap. The, the nozzle on the rep wrap was wrong, it wasn't printing very well, but I just tried to forge ahead uh, and create a linear slide, um, which is based on these bearings here. Uh, and the idea was is it would be modular that you could attach it to 16 millimeter aluminium extrusion. I think that is the, the the main thing that I've found by looking at many CNC router designs um, is that aluminium extrusion is the best solution to get like a flat either a flat surface, a flat slide, anything. So so that is definitely going to be part of the machine. Um, I found these 16 millimeter aluminium, uh, 16 millimeter aluminium extrusions a while ago um, just in my local DIY shop so obviously that's quite a low cost component um, I was going to design something a lot more elaborate but then I noticed these bearings 
actually slide along it. Um, I was going to design something based on that, but then I found that you can actually get this sort of bearing. This is called LM16UU-OP. If you built a rep wrap yourself, you'll be familiar with LM's. Sorry, no, you'll be familiar with LM8UU, um, which are the bearings on the linear slides on the newest rep wraps. I think this is on the newest Prusa design rep wrap as well. Um, you may have guessed the code name LM16 means that's a 16 millimeter bearing. Dash OP means it's open at the bottom, which would of course allow you to let it run along a 16 millimeter extrusion. Uh, but attach the 16 millimeter extrusion down to a base with bolts or something. So that could potentially be a very flat, accurate solution for, for a linear slide um, running along that bar. Um, however, just in the last week, uh, Savas has uh, kind of stirred the uh, stirred things up again um, by uh, by pointing out this. Uh, a sort of aluminium extrusion he's come across called V-slot um, because he's been looking at this inventable machine trying to improve on that um, but V-slot is a lot like T-slot you can bolt down using standard T-nuts I believe uh, but the V-section uh, lets you run wheels along it with a V-shape very accurately and, and obviously restricting any sideways motion. Um, the catch is that they're actually quite expensive, uh, at least the wheels. The V-slot itself is reasonable. I'm just going to show you Usenet's website. So these are the linear rails that, um, that I'm going to be buying for, that I'm probably going to be buying for the uh, CNC router. Uh, I'm going to just go for 50 centimeters bed to start with. So 20 by 40 by 50 centimeters is only 60, six pounds, which is pretty reasonable. Um, I would probably need um, something around eight lengths of this um, off the top of my head. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty cheap. Um, the problem being that the actual wheels that you need to run on that um, are kind of four or five pounds each. Um, I found that I can buy the bearings that would run in this though for about 54 pence each. So that means that each could be a, only a pound or so in mechanical stuff. And I've actually been trying to 3D print the wheels. Um, this is not perfect at the moment. Um, there is sort of a waving, wavy formation, which I believe is due to the uh, the plastic cooling on the overhangs um, and deforming slightly. If I can get over that, though, I can make each one of these wheels for a pound, um, which is well worth it. So I could save myself a lot of money. It is an open source design. Um, however, the interesting thing that I noticed when I downloaded the plans for this open source design uh, so this here is the um, is the V wheel copied and pasted from the open source designs. Um, so I was able to get for the V slots um, linear slide system, um, and you can see that there's only about 24 roughly sides in the circle, which is nowhere near enough. Uh, to actually print or, or manufacture this wheel in any sort of way. Um, however, uh, what I did was work out the profile um, of that um, of that shape. I drew it out here, um, and then through a long-winded process, um, which I may go through because I learned a bit more about SketchUp whilst I was doing it. I actually created a 200 sided version of the same shape um, which is what I've got here 
printed out in uh, quite bad quality. It's frustrating because the the top of the wheel, you can see, it's very smooth. Um, I just need to deal somehow with the problem here. Um, and probably as soon as I manage to deal with that, I'm just going to go ahead and order my bearings. Um, so there's my uh, latest attempt at the V-slot wheel. Um, I'm using Slicer, um, not the latest edition of Slicer, but a fairly up-to-date version, um, which can do support material and rafts. So this raft should just break off. This just kind of helps you... Um, there you go. Um, it basically gets you out of having to calibrate the uh, the Z height perfectly because the raft just kind of equalizes. Uh, it lays down a, a smooth layer before it even prints the shape that you wanted. Um, I have to say that's looking a lot better than my first attempt with uh, the wheel, um, but it still has some odd waving on one of the sides. But to be honest, that's actually pretty good because it's only the two edges which would actually meet the V-slot. Um, so I could probably get away with using this. I suspect that the reason that this is slightly better quality is because I fitted that spring there to increase the tension on the x-axis. Um, I read that uh, waving can often be to, due to insufficient tension on the x-axis. Um, which obviously increases the uh, backlash and uh, etc. All sorts of stuff you don't want. All that is, is a, um, a clothes peg spring which I bent around the... So, the way that I made that spring on the x-axis is there's a clothes peg. I had these weird miniature clothes pegs which are more novelty than anything. I have no idea why I bought them except I probably suspected the springs would be useful for something. It turns out they're useful for it turns out they're useful for tensioning rep wrap uh, belts. All I did was bend that around the belt to, in, to kind of increase uh, to create a sort of fold in the belt um, and the print quality certainly improved although it can certainly get better. The other thing, interesting thing about the linear slide system with V-slot is because I've got a laser cutter I would be able to cut the plates out which are also part of the open source design. The plates are what the, the wheels screw onto and then the linear slide fits alongside. I'll see if I can get the SketchUp file. Um, so this is the uh, open source file um, for SketchUp. Um, which models all of the V-slot linear slide system. Um, so this this is probably what I'll be attempting to make. This is a 40 by 20 um, aluminium extrusion with the V-slot wheels and uh, the general purpose plate for screwing those wheels into. Um, so my plan is to make this plate out of acrylic on the laser cutter, hopefully. Anyway, it's going to be an interesting challenge, um, at least if I don't ever manage to make these V-slot wheels successfully on the 3D printer, I think I'll have refined the, the rep wrap uh, even further and maybe learnt a bit more about SketchUp modelling. Um, but uh, yeah, essentially, hopefully I can reduce the cost of the, of the V-slot wheels from £5 down to around £1.20 each. Um, if you imagine a, a probably a CNC machine um, would use about uh, it must use upwards of 20 30 of these wheels so obviously reducing that cost could take it from 150 pounds just in wheels down to 30 40 pounds or less um, and also the satisfaction of actually knowing that it's possible to make a lot of the machine myself um, which of course has always been my, my main interest in attempting to make a CNC router. Um, 
I'll put more videos up as soon as I know what I'm doing.